once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And just a little light from heaven filled my soul. What my Mississippi, Arkansas folk? Come on, come on now. He bathed my heart in love. He wrote my name above. And I said, just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Don't want me to say, now let us have a little talk with Jesus, and we'll tell him all about He will hear us. Anybody know he'll answer? Oh, I said, I feel a little proud with him. And you know, I said, you know that the... I said, I said, just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Then they say, verse 2, I may have doubts and fears. My eyes may be filled with tears. But Jesus is the friend who watches day and night. Oh, I go to him in prayer. I tell you, he knows my every care. I said, just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Come on, y'all. Now let us have a And we we'll tell him all. He will hear all. Oh, he'll answer. Oh, can't you feel? Oh, tell somebody I know that the I tell you, I said, have a little talk with Jesus, makes it right. Then somebody get up and say, you don't know the word. Well, all right. 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 I said, just a little talk with Jesus, makes it right. Oh, all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. I said just a little talk with Jesus. Let me go back, way back. You remember this one? I said, uh, sign me up for the Christian Jubilee. Write my name, write my name on the wall. Tell somebody I've been changed since the Lord has lifted me. I want to be, I said, right. on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, I'm on. I said, for my Lord, for my Lord. And I promise that I will serve him till I die. I tell you, I'm on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, I said, come on, I said, I said. Bless that wonderful name. Oh, gee. I said, I said, bless that wonderful name. Oh, I said, I said, bless that wonderful name. Oh, gee, he's a, I said, no other. I still feel Baptist, y'all. Y'all remember this one? I said, I said, it can't nobody. Come on now. Do me like Jesus, I said, can't, no. Do me like the Lord, oh, I said, I said, can't, no. Do me like Jesus, yeah, oh, I said, he, he's my friend. Okay, you know what I said? I said, by and by, I said, when the morning comes, I said, oh, the saints, of God, go gather it home. We will tell the story. I said, How we? I said, And we'll understand it better by and by. I got to go. I said, There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, I said, There's power. Working power in the precious blood of the land. I love to praise him. I love, I love to praise him. I love, oh, I love to praise him. I love, I love to, I love to praise. Holy 
me. Oh, he's my rock. He's my rock in the middle. In the anybody know he loves? He's in the middle. He's just a jewel, a jewel. I, I said he's a jewel. Then I have found. some praise. Give God some praise. I thank my grandmama for the hymns. I thank my grandmother for the hymns. Woo, young folk, y'all just don't know about them hymns. Them is just some about them hymns. Woo, Lord, I tell you, you going through, you just need. You thought it was something about the H-I-M. You should know something about the H. Come on, say it, man, somebody. Something about a hymn. That lets you know that grace is amazing. Oh, Lord have mercy. Oh, yeah. I don't know what y'all grew up on, but that's what I grew up on. My grandmother getting on that piano. Big and Park, she just keep on going. And I used to be listening. I'd be, I'd be around that corner. And then I learned to be the back wall with you. They say, I love to say, love praise. Somebody say, I say, I say, I say, I love to praise his name. I love, I say, I love to pray. I love to, I love. Anybody love to? My grandma say, anybody love to? I went around the corner and say, Grandma, I love to. Mama, I love to. Yeah, Mama, I love to. My Lord, and she gone to be with Jesus, and I'm still praising his name, because there's something about praise. Come on, give God something. It's something about praise. Amen. Let me. These other verses. Listen, we said, he said, if it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able. Now, underline, is able. Our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us. Write down, he will deliver us. Out of thy hand, O king. Verse 18. But if not, write that down. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship thy golden image which thou hast set up. I want y'all to remember those three things, you know, those three things. And we're going to come back to that. Now, we're going to talk about the three words that we never want to hear. We start out with these three guys in a, a heated circumstance, and they have a certain response in the Old Testament. And then Paul explains that there is a thorn in our flesh that Satan used to buffet us. And, and, and he wanted God to take it away. But God, I'm not going to take it away because my grace is sufficient. So I could have uh, labeled this, is his grace really sufficient? And that would have hit my point. But the three words is, they said that our God is able. He can deliver us, but if not, we still ain't going to bow. And the three words we, want, we don't want to hear, that we need to hear, as my subject is, what if not? What if not? Now, it's it's going to make a whole lot of sense to you because you're going to, 
This is something going to help you measure where you are. Because a lot of us, we, we kick our assignment to the side, and we kick our call, and we kick everything to the side when things don't go our way. And we jump ship, say amen, somebody. And so then we abandon the relationship because we think that we're in this thing to get what we want. But, but God is able. I believe he will deliver, but sometimes it's if not. Let me teach that. If I had come in here, you came to the hospital, and I'm on my sick bed, and uh, Cody came to see me. He said, hey, big bro, I, just want to, I got a prophetic word for you. God is able. Uh, I would say, Brother Cody, I love you, but that ain't prophetic. <laughs> I've never had a question about God's ability. Right. I know he is able, but when I'm in the hospital, uh, Sister Tamika, I just want to know, will he? Right. I know he's able, yes, yes, yes. but I need for you, if you're going to give me a prophetic word, I need for you to tell me, will he? Right. So it's not a prophetic word to tell me he's able, but will he? And so we look at this scripture. The king is telling them that, you know, if they don't bow before this music, they're going to have some terrible circumstances. And it says that, King, our God will deliver us at thy hand. He is able. He said, but if not, we will not serve the gods nor this golden image that you have set up. Now, I want you all to uh, keep your Bibles open. Don't miss how the king has changed from verse 13 to 19. In verse 13, he's in his rage and fury. He's just in there. But in verse 19, in verse 13, he's just in there. In verse 19, he's full of fury. So in, 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 you're messing with him in verse 13. In verse 19, you didn't take them all the way off. So his attitude towards these boys changed. Because at first, he's just trying to be cool. Okay, maybe you guys didn't get the memo. Maybe you just, you know, you forgot to stand or something. You know, maybe you didn't get the memo. But then when he found out that, they, they let them know, yeah, we got your memo, but we ain't going to bow. And, 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 and so, so now his attitude towards these boys have changed, and he has spake and commanded that they're going to heat that furnace seven times hotter than it should be. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Now, I want to teach this, and I'm going to put it all together. Uh, uh, in 2 Corinthians, we see, we see Paul in 2 Corinthians. Now, in 1 Corinthians, if you understand 1 Corinthians, Paul was truly irritated. He was truly irritated by the attitude of the people. And in 1 Corinthians, he was so irritated that uh, he didn't bite his tongue. He let them know about themselves without holding back. So the people who really hated God and hated Paul, uh, uh, the Judaizers, what they did, that Paul had went off on the people, the people were already upset. They took this as an opportunity to be anti-Paul in their teaching. To try to turn the people against Paul. Now, in 2 Corinthians, Paul is very concerned about the attitude of the Corinthian people. Can I teach? He's concerned about the attitude of the Corinthian people that they have against him. And it gets very personal. Somebody say personal. And so he begins to deal with the people that used to love him that now have turned against him. I want y'all, don't miss this. Stay when we're going somewhere. Don't miss this. The people are against him. They are against him, and because the people are against him, God has taken him into a deeper revelatory experience. Right. Come on, say amen, somebody. Amen. He's gave him a deeper revelation. Can I stay there? So, 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 so now that God has taken Paul into a deeper revelation, Satan begins to buffet him. Right. So the people are against him. Satan goes after him, and God won't do what he asks. Because Paul was like, okay, uh, God, I could be perfect if I didn't have this thing in, inside of me that every time I want to do good, every time I want to do right. I mean, if, if you just, just move the thorn, I'd be good. But that would have made Paul a robot. God don't want to move the thorn. God wants to have some tests to see that we really love him. Say amen, somebody. And God said, I'm not going to move the thorn because the answer to your question is not to remove it, but for you to believe and know that my grace is sufficient. Come on, say amen, somebody. Can y'all got time for some teaching this morning? So I asked the question, I asked the question, what if not? There's something that we say in church, and it sounds so churchy, so religious.